Okay, my friends, today we're going to get into uh, the uh, afterlife of life. And this is from my collection of giant humans. This is 30 inches wide. It's That's the bone in the back. That's the fingernail. I've shown it over and over. This is the grip skin fingerprint on the other side. Again, shown it many, many times, so I'm not going to get too deep into it. Um, DNA certified. So let's talk about Enoch, Thoth, and um, Jesus Christ. Hello, my wonderful, exciting, fabulously interested friends. My name is Roger once again, representing the only university on planet Earth that knows our real past. Now, this is Paul Wallace talking about Enoch. Now, who was Enoch? Enoch was, um, I, I think it was the great-grandfather, or grand, I think the great-grandfather of Noah. But he was the guy that God liked best on earth, and he took Enoch with him. And he divulged all the secrets to Enoch. And Enoch spoke of giants in absolutely incredible sizes, the sizes that Tyson and I are finding on planet earth, and everybody is now. And so now we have to take Enoch a little more seriously. Let's look into the past. And again, this is Paul Wallace. He's doing fabulous. This is called The Book of Enoch, Fallen Angels and Demons. Why was this suppressed from the Bible for 2,000 years? Exactly. And it's still being suppressed today. So let's see about this a suppression. When he investigated, he realized he'd stumbled upon an incredible... All right, this is, this is the discovery in 1947 of the, I believe it's either the Dead Sea Scrolls or the Nag Hammadi texts, but both of them were discovered basically at the same time. And what I found very, very, very interesting is that these illuminate things that nobody knew. And, and they were written thousands of years ago, and they support things that everybody sort of, oh, that's got to be crazy. No, <laughs> they're supported now. Not only that, that was like just after the Jews were slaughtered by the Nazis. It's got a lot, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of analogies that go very, very deep here. Um, you know, are God's chosen people? I have no clue. No idea whatsoever. I think the chosen people are the ones that do God's work and to do, do God's will and do the things that God said. The, the Ten Commandments. After that, actually, all you need is a golden rule. Once you're done with that, it's over. The case is closed. You no, no more words are needed. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Then go home. Incredible treasure trove of ancient texts. Between eight and nine hundred manuscripts have since been recovered, among them some of the most important historic and religious texts ever found. Among them, the Book of Enoch. This is where it gets interesting. The earliest version of the Book of Enoch is the Ethiopian book. Ethiopia is home to the one church communion that accepts the book of Enoch within the canon of the Bible. All right, let's talk about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is on the other side of Africa from where Atlantis was. Let's take a look at that. Okay, um, people that have been really digging deep probably know about Thoth, Hermes, Trimacic. Trimagistus. Now, who, who was Her Hermes and all these different names? And why is this significant? Well, the true knowledge, wisdom, and techniques of Thoth Hermes Trimagistus were so wondrous, he was revered by ancient Romans as the god Mercury, the messenger of the gods, and by ancient Greeks as Hermes, the god of the healing arts. Also, it was known in ancient China as Fu Zi, creator of the I Ching, and in India as Vamana, the last Vamana pilot. 
In his travels around the world, he collected certain pre-Great Flood artifacts and documents which he used to resurrect the wisdom and techniques of the ancient ones. He was, he was uh, there's a lot written about him. The wisdom and techniques of Thoth, Hermes Trimagestus en enabled Egypt to become the center of civilization. Now we're going to get into that. Where did he come from? He came from Atlantis. His amazing wisdom of life and vast amount of historical information were modified, diluted, and woven into the fictional stories of the Bible. Thoth was given the name of Enoch by the Sumerian Hebrews, and he is the only man whom the Bible says walked with God. So we're going to go into the story of uh, Thoth, and he was from Atlantis, and I have shown Atlantis many, many times, and it is over here, and it collapsed, no question whatsoever, and all of this area here ran over the top and out, totally recorded by Plato. Now, then they had to to go around the world and take what they did. They went all, everywhere in the world. They were pretty much headquartered here and they traded with the world. But once this was gone, they populated the world. So where did they populate? One of the things they populated was Ethiopia. And where is Ethiopia? It's right over here. And the, the Ethiopian traditions say that these long-headed people came out of the mud from the east sophisticated in every way. Now, let's see if that makes sense. As far as the Bible goes, and as far as the ancient documents goes, and as far as Enoch's goes. Because Enoch was tough. They gave him a new name, apparently, I don't know why. Okay, this is the Greek or Russian or something. I don't know exactly what kind of language it is, but they're talking about Atlantis being a huge, huge thing way outside of the straits. Well, this was all water, and, and it, it was, there's no question. And it ran out of air, no question. But, and this starts, this says prior to 9500 BC. Okay, so, and that's correct, I go along with that, because that's exactly what Plato said. He said, prior to that time, this was an ocean, it drained out, and they will never speak of mud again. <laughs> so much mud ran. Now, and I could see that. I could see that that straits, which I pointed out before, was not a huge straits. And I believe that was the only inlet. But once it broke and then it started to flood out and then it started to drain, it pulled it through there and then it opened this expanse up wider than it would have been. So I believe Atlantis was a little tiny compared to what they're showing here. Very small and Outside of that was, uh, I believe that's the Cape Verde Islands. And that might have actually been established after the flow of all that mud. So this was all water. Now, I can't account for giant fish, giant dragons, all of that stuff. Stuff we've got to look at. But it was written about, there's no question, and it is there, there is no question. To have somebody say, oh, it's impossible because it's impossible, that's not, that's not a thinker. That's not somebody that I want to talk with. They have no, nothing to say other than, no, I'm not going to look at it because it's impossible. And that is our academic system at this moment. Time to change that. Alright, so let's, let's take a look at the uh, geography here. Now, this is Jerusalem. This is where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, this over here is Ethiopia. And this over here is where I say Atlantis was. So let's start at Atlantis, because this is where, where uh, Thoth, and he was a he was a, some form of a god, and he was um, he was working closely with God. It appears because he ended up being Enoch. Now it's confusing, but it appears that God had a major representative here on Earth called Thoth, um, Enoch. The, the Romans called him the god Mercury, and he was like a representative of God. Now, was that God's son? Was he Jesus Christ? I don't know. But it appears that he was the representative of God or that realm here on earth. And originally, Atlantis was here. Very well described, totally 
understandable from what Plato wrote. And you can see everything ran out over the top. Everything ran out of here. And you see some old maps of, of this area. It was completely water, completely water. And at Atlantis was in the gates of the strait. And here's the straits, right there. Okay, and that's, they must have been able to get in and out of there. And that might have been the only place that they could get in and out of there from this, from the Atlantic. I don't know. But I can tell you, that's a straits. <laughs> now, I looked at this very carefully. How this the water originally ran over this way first. And then, of course, it all started to flow. And, and it's very deep. And this dropped. Exactly what Plato said. He said they mined from underneath of it all that there was to offer. And, and one day there was an earthquake and everything collapsed. And in 24 hours it was gone. Now, in the Bible, it talks about Babylon and being gone in one hour and that the, it was a seafaring and all the people that made their money from the sea lost everything so uh, you know I don't know if that was the original Babylon there's a lot of stuff that we want to look at because we ne now it's a different world we have to look at these things with new open eyes which I have been doing and it's been fascinating as hell I mean giant fish all right, over the top of Atlantis, being attacked by giant dragon. All right, dead here, rotting off, decayed in the desert, and it looks like the throat was cut, just exactly what it says in some of the ancient religious texts. It says he sliced his throat with his great and mighty sword, and it runs all the way down to here. And Columbus's map shows. A dragon from here to there in 1490. We've laughed at everything because we just consider this, ah, that's too much. Now, going a little further on this, I'm going to start talking about how Atlantis, what did these people do? What did they do after they, they lost everything? Because they were very, very, very sophisticated people. They were, they, they ruled the world. And they traded with the world. Pretty much they used the world. It's what it looks like to me. And one day, psh, they're gone. Well, their, their home is gone. So, well, they're not just going to disappear. Because they're probably all over in their boats and this and that. And um, so, they got to set up shop somewhere. So, let's see what they did. And the place where I'm first going to start is Ethiopia. Because the story of Ethiopia, they said that the, the sophisticated, long-headed people arrived out of the mud from the east, sophisticated in every way. Now, then they they started to overrule these people and take advantage, not take advantage of them as well. Maybe they did. I don't know what they did at that point, but they became the rulers and the round-headed people, which were literally infantile compared to these uh, people coming with all of their sophistication, they became, you know, sort of used. You know, well, I don't know, you know, you just take it for whatever it's worth. They, maybe they helped them. Maybe they decided, we're here, well, we're going to do all kinds of things to help you. Maybe they just used them for slave labor. I have no idea at this point. But it, it, this is the time to investigate this with some some meaningfulness, not just, you know, oh, that's so silly, oh, these people are so silly. And the problem is, is it all relates towards some form of a god and gods, some form of creators that created this stuff. It's not just dead dust that formed and everything was accidental after that. I mean, they can still use that idea, but once you start going back into the text and see what is on this earth, that they, there's no way in the world they can account for any of the stuff that I'm showing. None of it. The dragon, the fish, let them start accounting for these things. And these are the people that are teaching our kids what reality is. They're leading them away from the truth in every way, every way in, in every realm, not just this, not just in, in their eternal <laughs> soul, which I think is a little on the important side. Everything else that they don't want to participate in truth about, they just disregard it. Don't talk, come talk to us. Go somewhere else. So, 
I am taking them to task.